All right, so this morning, let's move into today's lesson. I want to speak unto you, I want to speak to you on what I have titled the kingdom of Jesus Christ. I don't know if that is the appropriate title, but that's what, that is what it is, the kingdom of Jesus Christ. Father, this morning we ask you that we receive of you the spirit of wisdom and revelation and knowledge of you. Our eyes open to the reality of your kingdom in Christ, to the honor of your majesty. All the days of our life, eroding the kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to the honor of your name. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Amen. All right, so the kingdom of Jesus Christ. Um, I want you to first know, you know, when Jesus began his ministry, the Bible says that he began to preach in Mark chapter 1, verse 14 and 15. Now, after that John was put in prison, Jesus came into Galilee, preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God, and saying, look at it, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye and believe the gospel. That's Mark chapter 1, verse 14 and 15. So he began to preach the kingdom of God. In fact, if you read from Matthew's account, Matthew, Matthew generally used the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Um, some theologians believe they are not exactly the same. I, I think I would say, some, some people say they are, they don't, there's no difference between the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven. I would seem to say, believe that there is a slight difference. Um, the kingdom of God, I th and I think I've done this with you before, the kingdom of God encompassing all of God's creation, everything, heaven and the earth and all the things in them. However, on the earth right now, the Bible tells us clearly that God has given the earth to the children of men. Are you following this? God has given the earth to the children of men. So who controls the earth? Men. That's why in our country, a man is the president. All over the world, there is no country that a man or a woman leads the country. Either the queen or the king or the president or the prime minister. There is a political leadership that reigns over the nation and it is always by a man. But the Bible also tells us that there, there was the oppression of Satan in this world, sometimes in, in the past, and it continues even until today, in which case Satan supports men to rule over the land. For instance, since that oppression in the garden where Adam fell to sin, Satan became the god of this world. And that's what the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 4, verse 3 and 4. It says, the god of this world, Satan, the God of this world. He became the God of this world and we see his oppression also among men. You see his oppression among men. So, men are doing the bidding of Satan to reign and rule over this earth. You know, in one of the, tempta in one of the temptations of Jesus, when Satan came to him, he told him, see, took him to a very high, the pinnacle of the temple, showed him the landscape and told him, look, all the kingdoms of men, they belong to me. Bow to me and I will give them over to you. Bow to me and I will give them over to you. Think about it. Bow to me and I will give them over to you. Now, if he does not own the kingdoms of the world, it will not be a valid temptation. After all, you cannot give what you don't have. Are you following with this? If he does not have the kingdom of the world, how come he is able to offer it? Then it will not be temptation. It's just like you don't have a car. You are telling me that, Lou, don't worry. If you just get this question that I'm about to ask you correctly, I will give you a car. But you don't own one. I will give you my car. But you don't own one. So if I go ahead, put my best to answer the question, you know, it does not mean I will get the car. Because I know you don't even have one yet. Do you understand what I'm saying? So you cannot give what you don't have. But Satan rules over the kingdom of this world. He does. He does. And that is what Daniel, the understanding Daniel gave us, which, which we'll probably look at one of these days. And then we are reading Revelation from today, right? Today. We'll start reading Revelation from today. And then you will understand how that the world, the political system of this world, the economic system of this world, all the system of this world put together are in the hand of Satan. And he can, you know, he told Jesus, I can give it to whomsoever I will. I can give it to whomsoever I will. You see. So you know that the system of this world is not of God. So when Jesus came, he began to preach a different message. He said, the kingdom of heaven or the kingdom of God is at hand. In other words, I am bringing a reign 
that you are not familiar with, that is different from what you are used to. I'm bringing it here. I'm bringing a new thing. I'm bringing a kingdom. So, and in fact, in one of his messages, when he was leaving the earth, he said, we should go and preach the message of the kingdom. We should go and preach the message of the kingdom. So that tells you that, you see, the message, what we call the gospel of Jesus Christ, is the message of the kingdom. And that's why we celebrate the, the, the hope of his appearing. You see, and, and you know, if, if you go, I don't want to digress into a lot of things, but if you look at all the things that Jesus taught, one fundamental thing he, he repeatedly said was that we must watch out for his coming. He, 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 he emphasized how the preparedness that we must have ahead of his coming. Meaning that you cannot be a believer and be slouching. And I've told you, man, you see, that when you are a Christian, there are certain things that are true alongside it. That you are a Christian means you go to church. That you are a Christian means you pray. That you are a Christian means you study the Bible. That you are a Christian means you will preach to others. Now, you cannot be a Christian and you exclude all those things. That is what a Christian does. A Christian prays. A Christian studies the Bible. A Christian goes to church. A Christian has a pastor. I mean, your pastor might not be a pastor. He can be a prophet. He can be an apostle. He can be a whatever. But you have a ministry gift. Because this is the life that we see in the Bible of a Christian. So you cannot exclude any of those things and say you are a Christian. You know, like there are people who, be, who say they believe in the Lord, but they don't go to church. They say, church is full of hypocrites. Yeah, I don't have time. I don't have time. <laughs> just join the rank of the hypocrites so that it will be plus one. It's just as simple as that. Uh, we are all sinners saved by grace. Why are we not? We are sinners. We are all saved by the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. So join the ranks and start developing too so that all of us will get better together. Amen? That's the way it works. So, that's the go- so Jesus brought a gospel. He said he began to preach the kingdom of God and he says, the kingdom is at hand. Now, that is one. Number two, there are another thing I want you to observe. The, you know, some Pharisees came to Jesus in Luke chapter 17. So, open your Bible, Luke chapter 17. I'm going to read from verse 20. You know, he, he had been preaching to them, the kingdom of heaven is at hand, or the kingdom of God is at hand. He's been preaching that. So, in verse 20, look at it. Luke 17, I'm going to read from verse 20. And when he was demanded of the Pharisees, when the kingdom of God should come, he answered them and said, The kingdom of God cometh not with observation. Are you following me? The kingdom of God does not come with what? Observation. See that word observation? This, it is only used in this place in the entire Bible from the Greek, paratesis or something like that. It's only used here, only. And you see, it is something that has to do with sight. Something, it is, it has sight evidence. So Jesus is invariably saying, the kingdom of God cannot be traced with physical evidence that you can see. So if you, if you, if you are looking forward to the kingdom of God, there is nothing you will see to show you that the kingdom is here. I don't know if you get what I'm saying. <laughs> there is nothing because there is no sight to see about the kingdom of God. So when you say, where is the kingdom of God? It's, it's not like when you say, Yoruba land. You know, you can go to a definite geographical location and say, Yoruba land begins at, uh, they say, they say, Ilefe, the source. And it extends east and west, either to, you know, far, 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 Kwara. Some people say Kwara has been taken over, but some part of it is still dominated by Yoruba. And then goes west too, or, or east. So, and they tell you, okay, not south, they tell you the boundary. If you say Benin, there is a place called Benin. Right? Uh-huh. But when you say the kingdom of God, where do you point to? <laughs> you point up. <laughs> up. So when you say hop, where? The sky has no boundary as far as we can. <laughs> you know, it just extends. Like, how, how far can you go? You know? That's why I said the kingdom of God is everything under God's creation. Do you, do you follow now? And usually when we talk about, and, and it's okay when you talk about the kingdom of God, you know, or when you talk about heaven, we tend to look up, right? Up. And, it, and it's fine. Because for us, that's the, way we can, that's the way we can measure that reality. To look up. And of course, when Jesus was 
when Jesus ascended back to heaven, you know, he was lifted off the ground into the sky until a cloud took him out of their sight. Now, a cloud taking him out of their sight, does it mean he kept going up, going up, going up, and he vanished? You know, uh, it's just the way physical reality works. That's how we can relate with that world, you see. But that world is the spirit world. I don't know if you get what I'm saying. Uh -huh. And the spirit world is not, is not a geographical location. I hope you know what I'm saying. It's not, a it's not a geography. Okay, when you now take a flight, you now go to uh, maybe a, a, a planet in another galaxy. I don't know if you get what I'm saying. Uh -huh. that's not, that's not, you should not think of it like that. It's, it is the spirit world. It is the spirit world. It's not a physical place. Because if it is another galaxy, then it is a physical place. Right? It's a physical place. But the spirit is not like that. But it's okay if you look at it that way. But Jesus says, the kingdom of heaven, the, or the kingdom of God, does not come by observation. Look at it. Verse 21. Neither shall they say, lo there, or lo there, or lo here, or lo there. For behold, the kingdom of God is where? Within you. Since the kingdom of God is within you. That's why, you know, people say the kingdom of God is the reign of God in the heart of people. Now, if you say that to Jewi, they will tell you no. <laughs> it's not that. It is a physical reality. Yes, there is a physical dimension to the kingdom of God, which is what Jesus said, that the kingdom of heaven is near. He is bringing that reign of God in our heart into a physical dominion. Are you following this now? Okay, let's, let's go on. Uh, and he said to the, unto the disciples, The days will come when ye shall desire to see one of the days of the Son of Man, and ye shall not see it. And they shall say to you, See here, or see there. Go not after them, nor follow them. So he says people will begin to tell you, See, Jesus is there. Jesus is here. Jesus is there. He says don't go after them. Don't go. You know, he says, the kingdom cannot be discerned by physical observation. So he says, for as, as the lightning and as the lightning that lighteneth out of the parts under heaven, shineth unto the other parts under heaven, so shall also the Son of Man be in his day. Can you see? Now, look at the unique information he brings in now. But first, must he suffer many things and be rejected of this generation. And as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be also in the days of the Son of Man. They did eat, they drank, they married wives, they were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark, and the flood came and destroyed them all. Likewise also, as it was in the days of Lot, they did eat and drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they builded. But the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Even thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. So, the, the, he brought us the knowledge of the kingdom of God, yes. But he says there is a day. But he says before that day, when he is revealed, will come. He says he must, be, he must die. That's what he says in verse 25. He must suffer many things and be rejected of this generation. He said, first, before I bring that kingdom into a physical reality, it remains a kingdom that you cannot observe. A kingdom that you cannot observe. You cannot, there is nothing to see. I mean, think about it. The Jesus that you are exposed to now, did you see him to believe? No, you did not see him. Yeah, of course, Jesus said, it is, it is uh, uh, blessed are those without sin who believe. They, they only heard the message and they believe. You see. So he says, they are blessed. You see. But it took the apostles to see him, to follow him around. Saw the miracles. He showed them the scriptures. Explained the scriptures to them. For them to understand that this is the Messiah. But for us, he told them to tell us that the kingdom of God does not come by observation. So you cannot set up a telescope to pick the coming of Jesus Christ. I don't know if you get what I'm saying. You cannot. Because when he would appear, there will be no... Of course, the Bible talks about signs in the heavens that we will see, of course, yes. But 
the kingdom itself comes not by observation. In fact, let me read one more to you. Matthew chapter 16. This is Jesus speaking again. Matthew chapter 16. I'm going to read from verse 1 to 4. Matthew chapter 16 from verse 1 to 4. The Pharisees also with the Sadducees came tempting and tempted and tempting desired him that he would show them a sign from heaven. He answered and said unto them, When it is evening, ye say it will be fair weather, for the sky is red. How many of you can read the sky? You can read the weather. Can you? When you see it, you're like, it's going to rain today, right? Uh, ah, today is going to be very cloudy, right? Ah, today there will be no, the sunlight is not going to be very hot. You know, people can read it. That's why today we have, um, what do you call that part of the news? Weather forecast. They tell you when it's going to rain. They tell you, tell you when it's going to be cloudy. They tell you when, what again? When it's going to snow. They tell you the temperature. Average temperature for the entire day. So that you can plan your day. If it's going to rain in the place where you are going, you can plan. You see. They tell you every major city of the world what the temperature is going to be like. Whether it's going to rain in every city. They can tell. In fact, when a, when, when a, 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 a turbulent wind is coming, today, science can easily tell you that, oh, there is an hurricane coming. And if you have been following um, this space station, they have a Twitter feed. If you have been following them, they will always show pictures when that hurricane is building, when they, pro when they predict an hurricane. They will show you pictures of how the hurricane is building up from the sky. Because they are sitting kilometers above. They can see it. So they, they snap it and they publish it. You see, we can, they can tell these things with science today. See, so this is what Jesus is talking about here. That you can tell. And verse 3 says, And in the morning it will be foul weather today, for the sky is red and lowering. O ye hypocrites, ye can discern the face of the sky, but can ye not discern the signs of the times? A wicked and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign, and there shall no sign be given unto it, but a sign of the prophet Jonas. And he left them and departed. What is the sign of Jonah? Jonah died in the belly of the whale three days and three nights. In fact, Jesus went to, I had to say it elsewhere to say, as Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights, so shall the Son of Man be in the belly of the earth. In other words, I'm going to also die and be buried three days. And it says, on the third day, he will rise from the dead. Right? Remember that was what we read in chapter 17 earlier. He said, he must be rejected of this generation first. I know that we, I don't want to, you see, that he was born is an established fact. We've done several lessons on that. And I don't want to burn a lot of time there. But look at it. He's, he brought a kingdom. He was born to bring the message of the kingdom. You see that now. All right, so let's go on. So Jesus says, if you can read the face of the sky, you should be able to determine the times and season we are living in. Are you following this? So, the sign of the Son of Man is easily readable, just like the weather is readable. And if you have enough sense to read the weather, you should be able to understand the sign of the times. I don't know if you get what I'm saying. So, when people uh, make things complicated or necessarily about the gospel of Jesus Christ, you know that they are being deliberately mischievous. See, the gospel is not hard for anyone. People, that's why the Bible says they rejected the knowledge of the truth. It is not, you know, when we did a lesson recently on Tobi is better than sacrifice, you know, it's one of the things I told you, that when you disobey God, it is not just a random act of disobedience. It is a rejection of God. It is, it is a rebellion against God. Disobedience is rebellion. When you are told to do something and you don't do it, you are rebelling against the authority of the person who gave you the instruction. And that was why Eve and Adam were judged. God says, don't eat of this tree. And they chose to eat that particular one. And they were judged. You see, ah, what is the big deal? What did they do that somebody has not done before? Why would God judge them like that? Some people even say, why will God judge, meet out an eternal judgment 
for a temporal sin. So why will God judge something that is a temporal sin, something of this earth that is a, 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 a is not, is, is not a perpetual hurt. It terminates one day. This is why will he now judge us eternally for something we did in this earth? So you are asking the judge. Think about it. You are asking the judge. You so you said to the judge, what audacity do you have to give me the death sentence? You know, that's what you are doing. You say, why will you give me the death sentence? I don't deserve the death sentence. Uh, the offense that I've committed is simple enough. It may be, may, may, maybe at most 15 years in prison. Which one is death sentence? I don't deserve it. No, you are not the judge. Period. You are not the judge. You are not the judge. See. All right. Amen. Let's, let's read one more. John chapter 18. John 18. John 18, I'm going to read from verse 34. Jesus answered him, Sayest thou this thing of thyself, or did others tell it thee of me? He's talking to Pilate. Pilate answered, Am I a Jew? Thy whole nation and the chief priests have delivered thee unto me. What hast thou done? Jesus answered, my kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then would my servants fight that I should not be delivered to the Jews. But now is my kingdom not from hence. Is that in your Bible? My kingdom is not where? Of this world. Because the accusation was that this is the king of the Jews. And you know, they said that because they wanted to unsettle Herod who was the king of Judea in those days, that, ah, if, if Herod can, if, if they tell Herod that there is another king, Herod will become jealous. And in fact, I can take you to Matthew chapter 2, when Herod killed children that were two years and under. When the Magi came to visit him, they told him that they, there is somebody born, the king of the Jews. He said, where? They said, in, they said, um, in your jurisdiction. He said, ah, ah. He's the king of the Jews. He said, okay, go and find him. And bring me word when you have found him. So that I can also go and pay homage. Really? Herod, you go and pay homage to a small boy. <laughs> so, okay, fine. The guys went looking for Jesus. The star that they saw in the sky. And that's astrology. Okay? Um, an astronomy. I, I, I really don't see how both of them differ from each other. You say, uh, astrology is the study of astronomy is the, uh, both. The, you know, you can use them together to design the face. Uh, but God really wants the Israelites not to, not to read. You know, uh, to people today do horoscopes. Say, you are, what? What's your sign? You are Gemini. Okay, so you are, you say, she says, she's Gemini. Okay, so now, you say, Gemini, uh, um, you, can, you should marry somebody that matches your energy. Who would that be? Maybe Leo. You don't know. Okay, so, yeah. so Leo. Uh, or they say cancer. Or they say, you know, Sagittarius cannot... Um, um, they, have, they have energy together with uh, Libra. They begin to say, okay, so uh, if you want to choose a business partner, don't choose somebody that is Leo. Choose this one. And they begin to match, you see. Say, yeah, the best day to get married is November 25. They begin to give you specific dates, things to do and things not to do. No. The Bible says you should not do that. You know, there are palm readers. Uh, have you heard them before? Eh? Yes. Palm readers. Uh -huh. And, they, and you, you know, yeah, it, 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 is a, it is a body of knowledge that can be studied. Now, even pastors are doing it now. When they, when <laughs> you, go, you go there and they would say, give me your hand. And you give them your hand. They look at it like this. <laughs> As though they are seeing a vision out of your hand. You know? Uh, no. 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 All right? But Jesus says, my kingdom is not, is not from here. 
my kingdom is not of here. It's not of here. He says, if my kingdom were to be from this world, what will happen? My servants will fight that the Jews should not arrest me. Do you see that? So I will make sure the Jews don't arrest me because my servants will fight. In fact, when they came to arrest him, he said, and his apostles were going to fight back. He said, no, don't worry, leave them. Don't you think I can ask of my father 12 legions of angels and they will be available right now? And they will be available right, right now. You see. But he told them, you know, this is your power and the power of darkness. He submitted himself to death. Are you following this? So, he says, to show you that the kingdom of God is not of this world. So, the Jews had expectation that their king, if he's their king, if, are, if he's really their Messiah, is going to kick out the Romans from their land. And he's going to remove Herod, the imposter king, and reign over the land instead, in his stead. And he will, he will deliver them from their political foes. He will deliver them from their political foes. But they were wrong. They did not know that before his kingdom will begin, he would need to die. But he explained it to them. How come they did not understand? He said, before that kingdom will come, I would need to die. And I would come again the third day from the dead. So you see, his kingdom does not have origins in the earth. Meaning that the paranophilia of earthly kingdom will be absent in his own kingdom. He will not have a military force. Are you following what I'm saying? You know, every earthly kingdom has military force. No matter how small, there is no country of this world that does not have a military force. Even those ones who say they only have a force in the name of self, just for self-defense, they do have one that can be scaled up into a full-fledged military force. Are you following what I'm saying? So, everybody has a military force. They have police. If you don't have a very strong military, you have police. At least in your own country, you want to be able to quell insurrections. Do you see that? Countries have national guard system, what we call civil defense in our own country. See? So in Nigeria alone, we have police, we have civil defense. If you are young, in my own time, you used to call them guguru defense. Did you know that? Guguru defense. And then we used to have, you have the military, you have the navy, army, and then you have um, the air force. And then you still have military intelligence. Then you have military police among them. And probably there are even other security agencies that um, are there. For instance, we have the NIA, we have the EFCC, eh? we have the police, we have the ICPC. All of them carry guns. We have the border ones, the customs. Right? We have immigration. Do you know both of them carry guns? You know, they carry guns. Just to protect the land. But the kingdom of Jesus does not have those things. <laughs> are you following what I'm saying? Now, in the kingdom of Jesus Christ, he has ambassadors. And the Bible calls us the ambassadors of Jesus Christ. Do we carry gun? When he sent us out, what did he give us? A message. Are you following? He did not send us out with a gun. Say, kill them. If they don't believe you, kill them. No, he didn't do that. He gave us a message. He said, I make you today the minister of reconciliation. And I give to you the word of reconciliation. Go and speak on my behalf. See, you are speaking on behalf of God. The Bible says, you speak in Christ's stead. Be ye reconciled to God. That's what the Bible says. That's what the Bible says. So you need to understand that the kingdom of Jesus Christ is not the kingdom of this world. In Revelation, let's go to Revelation chapter 11. Or chapter 12. Let's read chapter 12 first. We'll still come to 11. Revelation chapter 12. I'm going to read from verse 7. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought against his angels. I'm, I'm sorry. And the dragon fought and his angels and prevailed not. That is, the dragon and his angels did not prevail against Michael and his angels. Neither was their place found anymore in heaven. And the dra great dragon was cast out. Look at it. That old serpent, 
Is that in your Bible? That old serpent called the devil. And what? Satan. Now, this is one thing Moses did not do for us in his writing. Um, Genesis 2, Deuteronomy. He did not tell us that that serpent that spoke to Eve was Satan. That is what Jesus and his apostles corrected. They clearly told us that serpent, that serpent that deceived Eve, took the kingdom away from them is, this, is what? The devil and Satan. Did you notice the devil has definite article in front of it? The devil is a specific devil. Because the, the word devil is a generic word that means the adversary. Do you see? Satan. You know, I mean, Jew, Jewish language and then the Arabic is very similar. That's why they, in their home they call it shaitan. Uh -huh. it's, it's because they are from, they are, I, I think they are all called Semitic language. They are all, they have similar roots. Satan. Someone who is an opposer. You see, he opposes others. And so human beings can be your opposition. You know that. But this one is a particular opposition. The devil. He says he is cast out. That deceives the whole world and was cast out into the earth and his angels were cast out with him. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, now is come, on, is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ for the accuser of our brethren is cast down which accused them before our God day and night. Can you see that now? Look at verse 11. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony and they loved not their lives unto the death. Therefore rejoice ye heavens and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the heart or heart, and of the seal for the devil is come down unto you having great wrath because he knoweth that he had but a short time. Do you see that now? So he says the dragon was cast out of heaven. And in a sense this has a literal fulfillment but yet we we'll still have a, more, a much more clearer fulfillment in that in the days to come, it will be completely expelled from the heavens. It will have no place there at all. It will not be allowed at all. You know, when the Bible calls him the spirit of the power of the hair, the spirit that works in the children of disobedience, in Ephesians chapter 2, that's talking about him. He says, but he is cast out of the heavens. He says, because he is the accuser of the brethren. So his activities is also among men. Here, to deceive men. Why is he deceiving men? The Bible says the thief cometh but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. You see that now? That's what he came to do. You cannot partner with the devil for, any, for your benefit. When he's done with you, what will, what will he do? He destroys you. Are you following what I'm saying? The devil never leaves you in a better place than he met you. He's going to make sure he ruins your life, destroy you, bring you down, so that you can go to hell together with him. Do you see? That's what he does. But Jesus Christ came. The Bible says, for this reason the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the work of the enemy, to destroy the work of the devil. That's why he came, to destroy the work of Satan. Satan came to destroy you, Jesus came to destroy his own work. So that you will not fall for his deception. So Jesus came into the world. He announced himself, I am the light of the world. He says, as long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. And if anyone believes in him, he calls them the light of the world. He says, you are a city that is set on a hill that cannot be hidden. He says, you are the salt of the earth. The salt of the earth. We make this earth what it is. If we are removed from this earth, what do you think will happen to the earth? Chaos. 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 
will break out. Are you following this now? So, you see, the reason the devil rules over this earth is because he is cast down to the earth. You know, when, 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 when God, you know, when, when in, that, in, in the book of Job, the Bible says, God asked Satan, where have you been? Where have you been? You see, if somebody asks you, where have you been? You tell him where you are coming from, right? Or where, or where you stay. He has no place to stay. He says, he roams back and forth on the earth. To and fro. Yeah. There's no definite place he can stay. He runs around. And, you know, Peter puts it in, in, in perspective. He says, your adversary, the devil. And I want you to know, you know, and I, and I, I think it was one of our daily lesson, uh, Bible lessons. And I, I did tell you that to think that idea that Satan is the opposite of God is, is faulty. And you should never have that kind of mindset that Satan is the opposite of God. No! Satan is the opposite of man. He is your adversary. Your, my adversary. The Bible says, he, he, the advers your adversary, the devil, prowls around, you know, like a lion. If you see documentaries, lions, when they are trying to catch their prey, do you see how they, they, they are very sneaky? They are very sneaky. And do you know, most of the time, time, lions don't hunt alone. They go in their pride together. That's the strength of the lions. The lion, the lion is not the strongest animal in the, in the jungle. But they are, they are hardly alone. They are hardly alone. Hardly alone. Usually they suffer casualty when they operate alone. But if you stay in your group, the chances that you suffer casualty is very low. It says they prowl around like a hungry lion. And usually hungry lions are always in a group. They form a head. You see. See, seeking whom he may devour. So he's looking for prey. But Peter says, whom you resist steadfast in the faith. Meaning that if you don't resist the devil, he will plant his activity firmly around you. Firmly. But Jesus came to destroy that work of Satan. And he gave, you see, go back to that Revelation chapter 12. He says, They overcame him, verse 11, by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. Meaning that the work of Jesus Christ, the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, you know, you know, believers eh, nowadays, we like to, we play with, with very serious spiritual reality. We turn them into a joke. He says, I plead the blood of Jesus. I plead the blood of Jesus. That is not the intention here. Oh. That's not the intention. The blood of Jesus is symbolism for the sacrifice of Jesus. I don't know if you get what I'm saying. It's not by saying, I plead the blood of Jesus. I plead. You know, we, we like to turn everything into formulas. You know, the blood of Jesus is not a formula to overcome the devil. The devil is already, is already defeated. And it took place in one event the death of Jesus Christ on the cross. It is a singular event that defeated the devil. So, you shouting the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus does not, he does not, the devil is already defeated. You are not trying to defeat him. He's a defeated fool. So when he says, we overcame him by the blood of the lamb, he's saying we overcame him by the sacrifice of Jesus. He's now on the horse. Look at it. The next statement is what? And by the word of their testimony. <clears throat> in other words, if you subscribe to that sacrifice of Jesus, you believe it. In that death, burial, and resurrection, what happens? You proclaim it, right? By the word of their testimony. Do you see? The testimony is not that you now go to church and you now say, I want to thank God for the salvation of my soul. That is good though, but it's not, it's, that's not what he's saying here. Uh, I overcame him by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony. I want to testify to the goodness of God in my life. Yesterday, I was going on the road and I was almost hit by a car and glory be to God. God, just by me, his miraculous outstretched hand, snatched me away from the paw of death. Glory be to God for that. But that's not what this one is saying. The testimony here is your testimony of Jesus. That I believe that Jesus Christ is my Lord and my Savior. I believe he died and rose from the dead the third day for my justification. 
That testimony is what we is by, by that testimony we overcame the devil. Are you following what I'm saying? It is not by uh, I, Father, I thank you, Father, because uh, the devil planned against my life that I will not succeed in this life. And in my family, where I'm the first graduate, help me give glory to God. <laughs> no. That, that testimony is okay. It's okay. It's fine. But that is not what he's saying here. Here, he's talking about what? What? Our witness of Jesus. That's the same word, testimony. Our testimony of Jesus. And I think I have a whole lesson. Testimony of Jesus. It's not, it's not this, um, uh, you know, we, we make a mockery of everything that the Bible te- tells us. It's, this is not that kind of testimony. You fact, in fact, that practice of testimony, maybe it is good for the times that we live in, but it, it, it is not an apostolic practice. Yeah, oh yeah, you, you receive it. Of course, I mean, when people got healed, they went into their community to talk about Jesus. Not to come and tell fellow believers. I don't even get what I'm saying. But now, today, we use it to encourage fellow believers to use their faith. Maybe it's fine. Maybe there's no sin in that. But that is not the purpose of the miracle. The, a miracle is a sign and a wonder. And when something is a sign, it means you use it to draw people's attention. I don't know if you get what I'm saying. So when you receive a miracle, who do you tell? The world, not the church. I don't know if you get this. So the same manner, look at it. The burial of Jesus, the resurrection of Jesus is a sign to the world. That this man, Jesus, is not just a woman. He's not just a man born from the womb of a virgin Mary. He is the son of God. Whom God has sent into the world to take away the sin of the world. Oh, how do you know that is the one that God has sent into the world to take away the sin of the world? Oh, he died. And he rose again the third day. His resurrection of the dead is God's evidence that he is the one that is approved of God to take away the sin of the world. How did you know that? I can show you from the Bible. That's why I always tell you the Bible is our book of what? Evidence. It's our book of evidence. You say, why are you, why are you charging this man to court? I have evidence against him. Where's your evidence? Then you bring out the, your evidences. When they ask us, how are we sure it is Jesus? We bring out our Bible. And begin to open the relevant passages. You see. And I've showed you that many times before. I, 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 if I take you through all that, I will keep you here for a very long time. I showed you Genesis chapter 1. From verse 26 to 28. I showed you Jesus there, right? What is it called there? The image of God. In chapter 2, Genesis chapter 2, what is it called there? The tree of life. In chapter 3, what is it called there? The seed of the woman. Are you following this? In chapter 6, what is it called there? It was symbolized with an ark. If anybody would just enter the ark, did God ask of their wickedness? He did not. He had told us in chapter 6, verse 3 or so, that the whole world had become wicked. That the imagination of their heart was only evil continually. But the only condition he placed on their way to life was to enter an ark. Are you following this? So, even in their wickedness, if they had chosen to enter the ark, they would have been saved. That's why I, tell you, I, I always tell you that disobedience to God is rebellion. And that's why it is judged eternally. It's rebellion. If you, don't, if you cannot obey him in very simple matters today, you cannot obey him in eternity. And he does not want those kind of people in that world. Are you following what I'm saying? Otherwise, we have to repeat all these things again. If you cannot obey simple instruction, believe and be saved. Believe. Very simple. Believe and be saved. The people of Noah's era, he only simply told them, enter the hack. Do you know that Noah went around 100 years with the same message, enter the hack. Nobody outside his family entered the hack. Not, not one. Not one. Only eight people. His wife, three children, and their wives. Thank God his, their wives followed them. Because in the days of Lot, they were simply to leave the community. That was the instruction. Leave Sodom. 
Leave. Leave. In that case, Lot and only two people, his daughters, survived. His wife perished. His uh, daughter's husband to be did not follow him. They said it was as though he was joking. The message of salvation is a joke. Your own salvation. Something that will preserve your own life. They thought it was a joke. That's why, you know, look at the church world today. We play too much with things that we should hold holy. Hold in high esteem. We sing away. Drama away. All the things that water down the gospel. We, we devote, devote our time and attention into those things. What did Jesus say? Preach the gospel. Of course, I gave you one of those examples in our last lesson. That even if you will now put creativity in the instruction of Jesus Christ, you must ensure that your ingenuity does not outshine the message. Did you remember that? You remember that? Your creativity in delivery must never outshine the message. So the, the drama, the skill with which you sing must not outshine the purpose, the message of Christ. So, me, I don't like orchestra. I'm sorry. It's artful, but I don't like it. Because when they sing, you don't hear anything. Or do you hear them? If you have super ears, I don't know. Maybe I can learn how to listen to an orchestra. When they are singing, when they are singing behind an orchestra, do you hear them say, what are they saying? I cannot hear a word. So, the heart has overshadowed the message. That art is useless. The heart must never outshine the message. See, you can know how to sing. When you sing, anointing will flow. It's okay. But the message must remain the focus of your anointing. Are you following this? See, you can act very well. Just make sure you are acting the death and the burial of Jesus so that the message the message of reconciliation remains the focus. And that is the whole essence of Christmas. It is not about singing and marrying and hitting. You know, today, it is becoming so secular. Santa, Father Christmas, rice, chicken, holiday, family gathering. It is becoming that. To the exclusion of the exact reason why Jesus came into the world. Why did he come? He brought a kingdom. And he says, that kingdom is not a kingdom of this world. Because this world is going to perish and it's going to fade away one day. But there is a kingdom, an everlasting kingdom. Remember the story of Daniel. He said this, when he, 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 Nebuchadnezzar saw a statue with a head of gold, with his chest and the arm of silver, with the tie of bronze, with the feet, with the leg of iron, and the feet of iron and clay mixed together. He said, and then there was an invisible hand that cut out a rock from heaven. And the rock fell on the statue of Nebuchadnezzar and it broke it to pieces. That rock is Christ. He's saying that a kingdom is coming that will destroy all the kingdoms of this world. A kingdom is coming and it's going to destroy the kingdom of this world. The Jews did not believe it. The Gentiles could not comprehend it. That that kingdom came in the Son, in, in the Son of God. A baby, a man. A baby, born of a virgin. But a very tiny baby. Can you imagine? God could have dropped Jesus from heaven as an adult. After all, he created Adam, an adult. If Adam came an adult, don't you think Jesus could have come an adult? Or do you think Adam, Adam was a baby? No. He must have been created an adult. Eve was created an adult. But Jesus was born a baby. And they could not reconcile it. Eh? See, son of God, baby, human being, son of God. But the Bible says great is the mystery of godliness. God is become a man. God is become a man. Period. God is become a man. See, how, is, how can God become a man? That is why he's God. That's why he's God. The Bible says with him, nothing shall be impossible. He said, God, you, so where is God now? He, if God is a man. Where, where, where? Great is the mystery of godliness. God became a man. Because there was nobody worthy 
to take on the, 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 the weight of sin of the world. No man could stand. Angels could not even step forward. Wait, think about it. Angels could not present themselves. Say, Father, use us. We will go for you and take away the sin of the world. After all, they messed up the Old Testament. I, I hope you understand that they messed it up. They messed it up. They messed it up. In fact, God told Moses, my angel, I will, give, I will put with you. He said, he's very, he's very stern. No? He will not pardon your sins. <laughs> if anybody sin, he will punish you. That was, what, that was what God told Moses. Yes, he will go with you, but he will, he will punish every disobedience. And you see, go through the whole testament. Even the children of the covenant, they died mercilessly. That was what Hebrews said in Hebrews chapter 2. He said, those people who were exposed to the ministry of Moses, they died in the mouth of two or three witnesses. Two or three witnesses. You are dead. Gone. Those angels, they don't care. They just kill you. You sinned? Sin? Oath. Remove him from the camp. And that was how Moses wrote the law. Guess what? Jesus came on the scene. And Jesus began to forgive everybody. Everyone. They caught a woman in the act of adultery. Brought her to Jesus. Jesus, they caught her. Incidentally, they, bring, they did not bring the man. Uh, amazingly, they did not bring the man. They took the woman, they did not bring the man. If you caught her in the very act of adultery, that means you remove the man from her. So where is the man? They, brought, they left the man to escape and they, <laughs> they brought the woman. Jesus said, okay, let him who is without sin throw the first stone. Those people dropped their own stones and they left. Hey, so if Jesus was not there, they would have killed her, even though they had sin in their own lives. Are you following this? He would have killed her. And Jesus asked her, ah, where are all your accusers? He says, they are gone. He said, they have not condemned you. He said, no, they have not condemned me. And neither do I condemn you. This is a new style. Though. This is not the usual, because in the, Pharise, in, the, in, the, in the era of the Pharisees, at the other you you follow Somebody messes up, you strike. You see. They, they brought someone to Jesus. His hand was withered. They were looking at Jesus. Will he heal the man on a Sabbath day? <laughs> he said, we, let's see whether he will heal him on a Sabbath day. <laughs> Jesus called the guy and said, stand in the middle so that everybody can see him. Stand. He said, stretch out your hand. The guy stretched out his hand. The hand became normal like the other one. He said, eh uh -huh. He said, I did that to let you know that the Son of Man is the Lord of the Sabbath. That is the Jesus that we know. He, because he brought a different kingdom. His kingdom is not a kingdom of this world. His kingdom is a kingdom of compassion, of mercy, of grace, of forgiveness. Are you following this? It's not the kingdom of this world. Where they suppress... You see, the Pharisees were given the key of knowledge. And they kept it to themselves. They did not want others to know. They kept it to themselves. The Bible says they go over land and sea to proselytes. That, that is, they go evangelizing. They win somebody, a convert. One, and the Bible says, Jesus, Jesus said it. He said they make him the son of hell twice as much as they are. Wait. Jesus just called the Pharisees the sons of hell. These guys were religious folks. Very religious. They fasted. They prayed. Remember the one that went to pray in Luke chapter 18. He said, I fast twice every week. I give my offerings to the poor. I give in the temple. You see, this, that, that was the kind of lifestyle they lived. Very holy people, by their own estimation. But God, in the kingdom of Jesus Christ, it does not count you by works. It is not by any righteous thing that we have done. The Bible says, it is of his own mercy that we are not consumed. That's what the Bible says. Let's read one more, and I'll let you go. Let's go to Revelation 11 now. Revelations 11. This one is very sweet. I'm going to read from verse 14. The second woe is past, and behold, the third, the third woe cometh quickly. 15. And the seventh angel sounded, and there were great, great voices in heaven, saying, The kingdom of this world, look at it, are become the kingdom of our Lord and of his Christ, and it shall reign forever and ever. Is that in your Bible? This is the kingdom of this world. We become what? We become the kingdom of our God. And of his Christ. Do you see? I says at a time. You know, remember the passage you read in Luke. In the first time, he's not going to establish the kingdom. He announces the presence of the kingdom. 
And he says, before he will now make an appearance, when his kingdom becomes a physical reality, he says, I will have to die. I will suffer many things in the hand of the religious people or the godless folks. I will suffer in their hand. But he says, then his kingdom will come. And that's what he's saying here. That kingdom, at his appearing, the kingdoms of this world will be the kingdom of Christ. It will be the kingdom of God. He is going to be the one, the Lord, over the heaven. And not just the heaven, but the earth also. So the Jesus that we believe is not just the Lord of the heavens. He has become also the Lord of the earth. The Lord of the earth. And he's coming back. And when he comes, this time around, not as a baby, in the womb of a virgin, he's coming back a king. And, and you know, <laughs> you know, I told you in our, one of our previous lessons, the king, you know, God as the creator, for instance, is, is the legislator. He, decide, he determines all the laws. He's the executioner of all the laws. And he's also the judge of all the laws. See, it's the judge. It's not like the head when you say, no, one person should not have the three powers. We abuse it. So they separate. The president cannot be the one making the laws. So we have legislators. So, ah, the legislators cannot be the one judging over the law. So they will appoint judges. But our own king is the judge of all the heads. Are you following what I'm saying? Our own king is the judge of all the heads. And I could show you from the Old Testament, you know, Moses introduced him as a prophet. Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse, from verse 15 to 18. He said, a prophet like me, God will send you. A prophet like me. You know, when David came, Abraham, Abraham told us he is, just, he is a seed. And through him, all the nations of the heart will be blessed. By the time we got to the time of David, David said, what God promised me is a king. And they are talking about the same person. The same. He is a prophet. He is a king. And David now introduced an extra dimension. In his prophecy in Psalm 110, he said, he is a priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. So he is a king, he is a priest, he is a prophet. The same man. He is talking about the same Jesus. The same Jesus. Who is, who, he, so he is, he is more than a prophet. Hallelujah. He is the king of all the earth. And in 1 Peter, chapter, 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 9, the Bible says, this is what he has made us. We are, a royal, we are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people who should bring forth, who should show forth the praises of him who called us out of darkness. Who called us out of darkness? Jesus. He has translated us from the, out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son. Called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. We were formerly not his people, but now we are the people of God. Do you see? So he says, in the, in the fullness of time, we will be his royal priesthood. We will reign with him on the earth. Hallelujah. This is the kingdom of Christ. It's not a physical reality. At least not of, as of now. It is the reign. His kingdom as of now is the reign of God in our hearts. Those of us that have surrendered our lives to Jesus, we are, in, we are members of the kingdom of God. We are members. And that's why Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 12 tells us that. We've done that many times. Since this, we have come to Zion. That's where we belong. We have come to Zion. And who are the constituents there? He says, God, the judge of all. He calls Jesus the mediator. Who again? Innumerable companies of angels. Who again? The, the church of the firstborn. The spirit of just men made perfect. Are you following? That's where we have come. That's our own, that's, that's our association. That's the, that's the fellowship that we have. Those are the people we associate with. That is why it should be difficult for you to be carnal because of the kind of association that we keep. Hallelujah. Do you understand this? That the kingdom of Jesus Christ is not the kingdom of this world. If his kingdom were to be of this world, then he will fight. That he should not be delivered to the Jews. But his kingdom is not of here. Amen. There were four instances. I cannot go to, to that one today. I'll, I'll show you another time. Where Jesus was asked to make political considerations, to make political decisions, or to, to comment 
on politically sensitive issues, he declined. They told him Herod had killed John. Jesus did not say anything. What did he do? He carried his load, moved to another city. Another time they came to him. They said, Pilate is killing people and mixing their blood with his sacrifices. Jesus responded, if you don't repent, you will likewise perish. They said, ah, oh, there was a tower that fell and fell on people and a lot of people died. Jesus said, more people died. Jesus said, unless you repent, you will likewise perish. They came to him. They said, Herod is looking for you. He's going to arrest you. You better deal with this matter now. He will arrest you. He said, go tell that fox. I am here preaching the gospel. I'm there preaching the gospel. And on the third day, I'll be perfected. See, he cares for no politics. Are you following what I'm saying? His kingdom is not the kingdom of this world. Hallelujah. Don't let politics drive you crazy. Don't let politics drive you crazy. Are you following what I'm saying? We are not here for the politics of this world. We are here for the kingdom of our, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I want you to bow your heads. Father, we ask you that we receive that heart of humility and total submission to the influence of your kingdom. That we are sensitive to what you are doing on this earth today. And we are not just sensitive to it. We are part and partakers of it. And we go forth with the message of the kingdom to others. Preaching the gospel of the kingdom. Bringing men to the light of the glorious gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And we trust you that in your own glory, you will complete the work of salvation in their lives. Causing the word that we preach to them to grow. And bringing forth fruit in them that hear it. To the glory of your name. In Jesus' precious name we have prayed.